Well, I've had my 50 gallon saltwater tank up and running for eight weeks now, and I thought this would be a good time to provide an update on how everything's going. The good news is that there have been no fatalities as of yet, and as of now, I've got a total of six fish in the tank. There's an Ocellaris clown, a six line wrasse, a royal grama, a neon dotty back, a long nosed hawkfish, and a bicolor angel. All fish are getting along well 99% of the time, which is really remarkable considering the nature of saltwater fish. I did observe my six line wrasse chasing my neon dotty into a cave just one time over the past few weeks. And I also noticed that my royal grama, who had made a home behind rocks on the back of the tank, decided to move to a new rock near the front of the tank after I introduced the bicolor angel. The bicolor angel wasn't showing any aggression towards the grama, but it did choose to hide in the back of the tank during the first three days after it was introduced. And I think the grama was just intimidated by the much larger bicolor angel and decided to find a new home. Now everyone seems happy in their new established territories. I decided to cover my tank with a glass lid because I've become increasingly worried about my hawkfish jumping out of the water. I've observed him darting about near the surface of the water on several occasions, poking his nose out, and since he doesn't seem to strike me as the most intelligent fish in the tank, I decided to protect him from his own stupidity and cover the tank so he doesn't leap out. I don't want to find a dried out hawkfish on my living room floor some morning. I've not introduced any coral yet. Nitrate levels have not stabilized and have been fluctuating between 10 to 20 parts per million. Now nitrate levels should be below five parts per million or really lower before coral are introduced. I've been using the Red Sea Nitrate Test Kit and found it to be very user friendly. To combat the high nitrate levels, I've been trying to minimize the feeding. I feed the fish one time per day and they're fed half a block of frozen prime reef or formula two. Here, you're looking at the tank about three hours after it was just cleaned. I had to wipe some algae off the glass and siphon the gravel, which was also a bit discolored due to a light layer of algae. I'm finding that even with the lights set below 5% intensity and running for about 10 hours a day, I get a dusting of algae on the glass and gravel after just two or three days. And the algae is greenish brown in color and it wipes off the glass with minimal effort with an aquarium safe scouring pad. There's a few different types of algae growing on the rocks, including small amounts of reddish slime algae, which is not actually algae, but rather a cyanobacteria. And cyanobacteria, if you don't know, it could grow as a sort of slimy mat over the rocks and gravel, and it, it could be caused by excessive lighting and high phosphate or nitrate levels. Now, since I use RODI water for my tank, I don't think phosphates are the problem, unless the fish food is high in phosphates, which could be the case. My best guess is that it has more to do with my lighting, which is often on a bit too long, as well as possibly the higher nitrate levels that I mentioned earlier. Each week I've been changing out about 20% of the water. All water that goes into the tank is first filtered through an RODI filtration unit. I store the RODI water in a garbage can until I need it to use it. And this way, if there's ever a disaster with the tank, I have a supply of filtered water ready to go. And I also have a five gallon emergency bucket of prepared heated salt water in case I ever have some sort of catastrophic failure with the main tank and need to get the fish in new water quickly. For example, if the main tank were to explode in my living room or if something toxic were to fall into the tank. Now, I mean, these are unlikely scenarios, but it's better safe to be sorry. The mechanics of the tank are functioning with no problem. All units are still operating very quietly, which if you've seen my other reef videos, you know is very important to me. One issue I did discover though is that the Marineland Magnum internal filter, it begins to fill up with air slowly over the course of the week, and one end then begins to float up. It likely does this because it's really not designed to be submersed horizontally the way I have it. I don't think it's filtering water at its full capacity when it's partially filled with air, However, if you just push it down and tap it a few times, it will expel most of the air and return to better efficiency. I've decided to use two heaters in the sump now in case one heater were to die on me. Again, better safe than sorry. The protein skimmer has been collecting skimmate well. It's empty right now because I just emptied the cup. I'm using a 200 micron filter sock for mechanical filtration, and I find that I have to rinse the sock about once a week or else it will clog up and the water will just overflow over the top. The cascading water is noisy and serves as an alarm that it's time to rinse the sock. Now this is a hobby that I really enjoy and now that everything is set up and running with the tank, 
it has not been much work. Just some water testing, feeding, and weekly water changes, really. Saltwater fish, they all have unique personalities and interesting behaviors. Watching the activity within the tank is very relaxing. And if you're watching this video because you're interested in setting up your own tank, I say go for it. And if you're not ready to go all in, then check in here with me. My plan is to post updates every few months. We could enjoy the hobby together right here on Go Hobby. Now please like this video and be sure to subscribe. Be sure to check out my other reef related videos here on my channel and thanks for watching.